for each and everyone tuning in. I pray it be very uplifting to them too. But Lord, as we bear our burdens one with another, as we sing praises to thy name, and as I preach, uh, as thy word is preached and declared, we rejoice in all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Good afternoon. Afternoon. Well, how many of you looked at the sign when you come in? I, <laughs> what did it say? Retirement is out of this. Hey. Oh, wow. Help wanted. Yeah, help wanted was on there. But did anybody read the bottom part? I've seen it on Facebook. Retirement is out of this world. You do understand what that actually means? <laughs> God wants you to help. Yes. God wants you to help. Amen. So it's a true statement out there. Help is wanted. God wants you to help. And when you do the things that God wants you to do, rewards come when, Brother John? When we get out of here. When we get out of here. Amen. It's clean as hell could. He had a sneak look at it today. He stuck his head up here. I, I didn't tell him I was putting it up, so mm. I just went ahead and put it up and sent it out on Facebook. But, uh, and for all y'all that's tuning in tonight, on Facebook, we're trying to get YouTube up and running. Uh, I think that the guys, Randy and them, said that they're trying to get the, what did I tell you that was? Yeah. The double hard drive. Yeah, double whatever, hard drive. Yeah, whatever it is, they're trying to get on the computer and stuff to get it. So that the next time when it crashes, it, it'll keep going. We won't have to worry about it. So that'll leave way back. But if you would stand with me, please, when I survey the wonders cross page. <laughs>
start to think about what God's done and what God still does for you. Praise God. Amen. What a great God we serve. What an opportunity. And we're here to praise Him. It's good to have each and every one of you with us tonight. Everybody, we got a visitor tonight. Charlie, come all the way from the big old state of California. Say amen right there. Charlie, good to have you with us tonight. And uh, he's trying to figure out whether or not he likes Tennessee. Do you like Tennessee, Charlie? I love Tennessee. Ah, amen. Well, that's good. We do too. We do too. Matter of fact, uh, someone's been here for a long time. And someone's left for a few years, and we came back. Say so, amen right there. And I was just talking to a, a preacher friend of mine today, and uh, one of her in Kansas, and he called me. He was telling me about a situation that was going on up there, uh, a pastor friend and everything. And uh, I tell you, we're living in some very difficult, difficult times. Amen. We need to lift each other in prayer. I don't want to go into the details. It's, it's a bad situation. God is in jail. The whole, the whole deal is just it's a bad deal. But darkness is all around us right now. And it really is. And we need to be praying one for another, lifting each other up in prayer. And uh, really, you just don't know. Look, look to the one on your left side, look to the one on your right side. Pray for them. Amen. Because we're all, unfortunately, right now, like, these are dark days. And they. And the devil will have no more than to steal, kill, and destroy. It's amen right there. Amen. So it's where we're at. So we need to be well aware of that. But lift each other up in prayer because you might be the next that's going to need really the hand of God to lead you out of something. Amen. And so uh, thank God for the opportunity we have to be in this house tonight. And as we do talk about prayer request and praise, I was talking to Vern just as I was coming in. He said, Preacher, be sure and mention Misty. She's got to go in and, and have some things done. And uh, so he was asking a special prayer for Misty as I was coming in. Continue to keep praying for Gene. Uh, he is in uh, the therapy or, or, or uh, whatever that is where they're trying to, what he has to be able to do is he has to be able to stand and uh, get himself ready and everything. Then they'll let him go home. And so we all pray for Gene uh, that he'll be able to do that and, and everything. Uh, as y'all know, a little over a week ago, he broke his hip. And, uh, and it's, well, it's been a little bit longer than it now. I mean, think about, you know, we're about a week and a half ago. I'll make sure I get that straight. But anyways, uh, keep him in your prayers. And then, of course, all these others that are on our prayer list, lift them up. And I mentioned to you earlier about Michelle. And uh, pray for her and her family as they mourn the loss of her mother. And all. so uh, pray for these different ones. Anybody else in the prayer request to praise? Yes, Ms. Howard. Say it like that, sister. You look through the wrong eyes. He sees you differently than you see yourself. Amen. Remember, he so loves you. Amen. It ain't this old thing. It's somebody that he died for. And in your eyes, you're precious. In his eyes, you're precious. Amen. Right there. That's the way it is. Anybody else tonight? Anybody else? Wherever wants to praise. Yes, sir, John. I got to praise. We got to go put Bibles together. Yet. Amen. Amen. Something over 2,000. Yep. Something over 2,000. I, I know we were excited about that. And we were doing Spanish Bibles. Thank the Lord. So you know if we're doing something over 2,000, we, we're putting some pretty good numbers together. So thank the Lord for that. I appreciate everybody who came out and, and participated in that yesterday. And we had a wonderful fellowship, a wonderful time. Anybody else tonight for a request of praise? Nothing? Nobody? All right. How many have spoken in here tonight? Well, then, all y'all got perfect ways. That's what I'm talking about. Unspoken. Yeah, I knew if I waited long enough, brother. Now, that's everybody getting their hands up. Anybody else have perfect ways to praise tonight? I just pray for us. I don't know their names or anything, but somebody had asked me to pray for their co worker, twin babies. 
new babies and they got, they're bleeding on the brain and mm. they have strep B infections. So their brain, it's a boy and a girl, but I have no idea what the family name is or anything, but they're in Vanderbilt. So please pray for Twin babies. Friends. Okay, pray for those twin babies, please. Anybody else tonight? Yes, Brother Carl. I thank God for guiding those doctors' hands and those needles that they gave the methadones with yesterday. Because Amen. It seems to provide a little relief. So. Amen. Amen. Good evening, Brother Carl. Good relief. <laughs> Amen. Some of y'all may know, may not know, Brother Carl battles a lot of his back and things like that. Very difficult for him. When God gives you a good day, you praise him for it. Amen. And when sometimes when that's a good, you still praise him for it. Amen. Anybody else tonight? Yes, ma'am. I just want to praise God for the love and protection that he gives all of us. Amen. Don't give no better than the Lord's love. But that protection goes off the well too. Amen. Anybody else tonight? <laughs> All right, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. Y'all catch up to it here in a few minutes. Y'all, y'all need to remember we're in Revelation chapter five. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. Brother Alex, lead us in prayer and pray for the offering and the service tonight. Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to come to your house tonight, Father, and, and just uh, ask you to meet with us here tonight and uh, open our hearts and, and our minds to receive the message that Brother Shane is going to give to us tonight. Give him the words that, uh, that we need to hear. And let a storm that uh, once we leave and we, we go out into this world that we'll be able to call and draw upon them and, and just pass the gospel out and maybe bless somebody that needs the blessing that we come in contact with, Father. And we thank you for the praises that were brought up and how, the, how your love and protection that uh, you give and share with each and every one of us. Father, uh, couldn't make it from day to day without it. Yes. Uh, we just we thank you for that. Uh, we know that we have many problems here. We've uh, got a family that's lost a mother, Glenn and Shelly, father, and they're traveling to, to go home uh, to lay them to rest. And we just ask that you'll be with them and give them safe travel. But father, uh, comfort them in the loss. Yes. Uh, we also ask. Uh, these twins that are in the hospital that, that's bleeding, we don't know their names, but you know who they are. Father, uh, we just ask that you'll be with the doctors, uh, show them and, and give them the wisdom that they need to know and, and to help them. Uh, Father, it's just starting life out like this here, and uh, we know that uh, you'll take care of them. Uh, Father, we do, uh, Ask that uh, you'll be with Missy and, and her procedure that's coming up and her operation and, and Vern and, and Debbie. And we just ask that you'll be with the whole family. Uh, help them through this time and, and get them through and make sure that uh, they just take care of each other and that just bless them, Father. And uh, we just ask that you'll walk with them. Brother Gene, we ask that you'll help him with his rehab, that he'll be able to go home quick. Uh, I know he's anxious. I talked to his brother Vern and said he is ready to go home the next day, but they're not quite ready to let him go. But we just ask that you'll speed the process along, that he'll be able to go. I thank you for each and every one of my brothers and sisters here tonight and how they lift me up and it's just a joy to see their faces, and, and I just thank you for the fellowship and the friendship that they bring and share with me, Father. Thank you for our visitor tonight. Uh, I ask 
ask that you'll receive a blessing from the message tonight, Father. Father, there's uh, we got some youths here that's getting ready to go out and, and have an adventure. I ask that you'll be with Brother Tim and them as they take them out. Let them have a safe but enjoyable outing. Let Brother Tim bless them with the words that he'll give to them in a couple of days that they're together. Father, we ask tonight as we take up this offering that you'll bless the gift and the giver. Give us the leadership that we need to uh, spend it and use it wisely to further your glory. Father, And we just ask as a whole and the world today, how they're just, they're out. Anybody that has anything to do with you, they're just out to get you. We ask that you'll be with this preacher in Kansas, that you'll uh, help him through his trials and his troubles. And, and we just ask that you'll keep the trials and troubles away from our pastor and his family, Father, and just walk with him, protect him. Put a whole hedge of protection around this church. And we'll just give you all the praise and glory. For these things we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. <laughs> Thinking that you can go it alone. You are created 
He is the creator. And because you are what you are, you ought to pay homage and respect back to God. Amen. Number two, don't ever forget where you came from. Never forget where you came from. I remember back uh, when I met the Lord and where he found me, like the psalmist says, he picked me up out of a horrible pit, out of my miry place, and set my feet on a solid rock and established my goals. Miss Claudia, I thank God tonight that God's God. And number two, I thank God where God found me. And I'm very grateful and very thankful for that. So you don't need ever to forget those things in your life. Keep those things in the right perspective. And if you do, that, help, that will help you to stay grounded. Say amen right there. Y'all with me tonight? Maybe you need to go back out and go back in and find it. Amen. amen. That way you stay grounded in your life. Look with me, verse number 12. Sing with a loud voice. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and under the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. That's what we're here to do. That's what we're going to do. Amen. Hey, it's why we are what we are. Remember who God is and remember where you came from. Keep those things straight in your mind. Worthy is the Lamb. Verse number nine, go back there with me. The Bible says they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the, take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood of thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Aren't you glad where God found you where he picked you up out of that horrible pit? Amen. Remember who you are and remember who God is. Keep that in perspective. The Bible says in Revelation chapter number 4 verse number 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. Sometimes we tend to get in our own lives, in our own selves, our, our own thought processes. And, and, you know, preacher, you just don't know. i got this going on, and i got that going on. and, and, and oh, 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 oh. We need to stop with the woe is me stuff. We need to remember who God is. We need to remember the fact that God so loves you and cares beyond all measure for you and has already made a way of escape for you. Yeah. Don't get down in the dumps on all this stuff. I see a lot of doom and gloom. Well, what if they're going to send off nuclear weapons? What do they do? What if this war between China and Taiwan happens? What if it does? What if the grocery stores run out of food? What if it does? You know, we keep going in that list. Who is in control? Who do we look to? The psalmist said, I look under the hills from which come my help. My help comes from the Lord. When our eyes are focused on the things of man, I'm here to tell you, that's our problem. When Peter was looking to the Lord, he walked on water. But when Peter began to sink, he took his eyes off of Jesus. When you begin to sink, you took your eyes off the Lord. We need to rise back on the Lord. We need to remember who God is and remember where he found us. Y'all with me tonight? Amen. You see, it changes the perspective how we're looking, where our eyes are focused. Worthy is the Lamb, he says. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things were Work together for good to them who are the called according to his purpose. Amen. Hey, do you believe that? Do you believe God's word? It changed your perspective if you did. How you walk, how you talk, how you present yourself. You see, here's the deal. It's not as if bad times ain't going to happen. They are. Matter of fact, if you know your Bible, you know the Bible's already declared that man that is born a woman is what? Few days and full of trouble. Amen. Few days and full of trouble. It goes with the territory. It sure enough does. 
Who in here tonight hasn't had a gut punch or, or got that old slap upside the head? Had those uh, hard, uh, difficult uh, circumstances, situations that you weren't planning on, all of a sudden jump out there and hit you right between the eyes? Come on now, amen. Hey, it happens to all of us. Don't act as if some strange thing happened to you that's more different than anybody else. You know, I feel for Miss Shelley right now. She's going up there to uh, say goodbye to her mother. I'm going to put her in the ground and move on. She'll feel it for days to come. Amen. But who out here amongst us hasn't lost a loved one? Who doesn't know how that feels? Amen. So my heart, Miss Claudia, goes out to her. Because I've been there. I lost a loved one. And, you know, I think about him quite often. Different loved ones I've lost down through the years there. You Charlie, I, I think about it, but you know what? At the same time, God still sits on the throne. God's still in control. Praise God. Praise God. You see, the way that we look through these stormy days that we're finding ourselves, what we're finding right here in the, in, in, in the believers, see, you read the verse again. And every creature, verse 13, and every creature which is in heaven and, and on the earth and under the earth and such are in the sea and all that are in them have heard I saying blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sit upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. You know, everything that has breath is going to praise God. Everything that has breath is going to praise God. Why not do it when it will benefit you? When I'm getting the motion and in, 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 in the habit is one to, to start praising him right now. Amen. Revelation 7, verse number 11 says, And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders and the four beasts, uh, and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. Ain't no mystery who they're glorifying. Ain't no mystery who they're praising, amen. God deserves glory. God richly deserves his, our, our glory. Revelation 19, verse number 1. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah. Matter of fact, ain't a bad word to say. Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and honor and power unto, our, uh, unto, unto the Lord our God. I like that little tag right there, Miss Melissa. You know why? It shows ownership, who we belong to and who belongs to us. The Lord our God. For, tr for true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her end. I got news for you. Sometimes we walk off as if Oh, mercy, why are all these bad things happening to me? There's an old famous message that was preached many, many years ago. Payday someday. Payday someday. You know, there's coming a day, there is going to be payday. There's coming a day where all things will be made right. You know, who out here amongst us doesn't feel sometimes slighted and, you know, some little injustice, some little, some, some little wrong that's been done to you? Don't get caught up with that stuff, brothers and sisters. Just realize that it goes with the territory. God's going to make it all right. Remember, he didn't told you in 1 Corinthians chapter number 11 right over there, there's some things he's going to have to set in order. Man can't do it. Matter of fact, right now, I'm not looking to mankind to straighten things out. I hear a lot of people talking about that devolution and things like that that's floating around out there. Oh, this is what's going to happen, and then that's what's going to happen, and then rah, 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 they're going to return this election back around, and blah, blah, blah. That's not the way I'm looking, brothers and sisters. Everything that they're talking about right here lies in the hands of man. Amen. And I'm not looking to man's hands. Let me put it to you this way. I didn't look to man to save me, Amen. and that included myself. Amen. I looked to the one that was able to go above and beyond anything I say, think, or do. So knowing who I am, remember I said don't forget who God is, and don't forget where God found you. So knowing who I am, knowing, knowing who I need, Amen. thank God, I'm here to praise Him. I'm here to glorify that name. I'm here to remind myself of where I'm at, 
of what my part is. Matthew 28, verse 18, Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Now, knowing that, the next part is your role. Knowing what you have, knowing where you're at, knowing what God's able to do. Go ye therefore into all the world. Amen. Hey, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to reserve all things. What's our command you? And lo, I'm with you all the way, even unto the end of the world. Amen. What I know and who I stand before, Jim, I'm here to tell you that empowers me to go and do what I'm supposed to do. Amen. And the best way to praise God is to live for Him. The best way to glorify Him, live for Him. Remember what I've told you in the past. You may be the only Bible that people read. Make sure they're reading the right one. We sit here at this Bible, uh, this Bible church right here, boy, this Faith Baptist Church. We we get all bent out of shape, Brother John. If anybody brought anything other than KJV, we're stickler on that. Say Amen right there. Come on now. Y'all know it. I ain't going to let no other Bible come in here. But guess what? What Bible are they reading when they read us? We'll be a stickler about what we want them to see in the OKJV. Okay, we ought to be a stickler on how we walk and talk and live our lives. Amen. John chapter 3. Go there with me. Man, y'all quiet tonight. You do realize chapter 5 is all about glorifying and praising Jesus Christ. Amen. So rather I get it out of you tonight, one day everybody in here is going to learn how to shout. Amen. John chapter 3, verse number 31. <clears throat> he that cometh from above is above all. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. He that is of the earth is earthly. And speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. Amen. Verse 32. What he has seen and heard that he testified. And no man received his testimony. He that hath received his testimony has set to his seal that God is true. Now what God has told you right there is. For those of us that have received his testimony. We've acknowledged that what God's word has said to us is true and real. We've acknowledged that. We believe in that. Amen. Right? Amen. Read on. For he whom God has sent speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. The Father loveth the Son and hath given all things into his hand. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abides on him. Now there is no middle ground with God. You either are or you're not. You either in or you're out. Amen? That's just what he says. And if you have him, you have him. If you don't, you better get on the altar. You better accept him. You know why? Because what he says is real and true. Now with that being said, John 17. John 17. Verse 1. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven. Said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. See how that works? God's going to glorify the son, and the son's going to glorify the father. Get the picture? Read on. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, in Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. There's a purpose and a reason. You know, I was just talking to Grant before services tonight, and I was telling him, you need to know what purpose that you're about. What, 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 what's your goal? What's your, what's your uh, uh, why are you here, son? What are you doing? You know, a lot of people just carelessly go through things. Just frivolous, and we just, just carelessly go at it. You realize God created you with a purpose. There is a reason for you. There is a purpose in your life. Amen. And when people walk and talk with a purpose, they got a different attitude. They got a different outlook. When they walk and talk with a purpose, I mean, hey, it changes things. Their perspective. 
active and amen. Hey, what God did is that he gave Jesus power as thou hast given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. There was no mystery why Jesus came. He told them. He told them. There was no mystery. He knew why he came. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. So Miss Doris, as he went through and did what he did, he did it with purpose. You know what he wants out of us? He wants purpose out of us too. Amen? As Jesus himself, as he's laid his, down his life, the Bible says, this God is for you. Guess what he wants you to do? He wants you to give your life for others. Give your life for others. By doing so, what do you do? You reveal who you are. You glorify God in the process, Brother Carl. Amen? By giving over yourself, it glorifies God. Now we understand this. We get this. Why? 2 Corinthians 8, verse number 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye, through his poverty, might be rich. Now, this is the part most people don't like to do, and that is sacrifice, giving of oneself. But that's what we need to do, giving of oneself. As what he did, he did it why? Because of his grace. I think sometimes we're waiting for something out of somebody before we react. We want somebody to do something, then we'll do something. You know, Jesus died before I ever did anything. Amen. Gave his life before I ever did anything. Sure did. Because he knew Brother Alex at the time what I would need. He knew it. I did. He did. So he laid out his life for me. Now that I've received him, and now that he has enriched me, Miss Sharon, what should I do? When 1 John chapter 3, 16 says, I ought to lay down my life for others. That's what I ought to do. Just like Jesus did for me. So when we get this concept, we understand this. Oh, how it glorifies God. Go with me to Philippians chapter 2. He expounds on that. Look what he says. Verse 1, if there, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, get my papers turned right here, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. You know, the devil would like to do nothing no more than to create confusion and destroy. He likes to drive a wedge between. He likes to bring chaos. Amen. Trouble, turmoil, those kind of things. But you know what? We're a lot stronger when we're together. We're a lot stronger when we're focusing on with our mindset going forward. Y'all with me tonight? Look what he says. Fulfill ye my joy that you be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. You have the reasons why and how it comes and your attitude and your spirit of what you're doing. Amen. All that should come to the surface and be right with God. Read on. Vain glory, he says. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than, he, than themselves. In lowliness of mind, let each... Meaning, Miss Kay, we need to start considering about others. Thinking about others. How others figure into that process. Saying with a loud voice, worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power, and riches, and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessings. Why are we praising a Lamb? Because it's the Lamb that made the difference in our lives. Why are we calling him the lion right here? That's not, that's not what role that brought us to our knees. Y'all listening? Remember I told you a few Wednesday nights back, I told you that the angel saw him as the lion. John saw him as the lamb. 
changed the perspective of how he looked at him and who he was to him. Who's Jesus to you? Hmm? How do you see him? How do you behold him? Now let's look at the scriptures and look and see what it says. <coughs> he said, look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Where's your mind at? Where's your focus? Where's your attention? I don't know about you, but as I look and I evaluate all these things that I mentioned to you earlier that people are panicking at and freaking out over, I'm not. I'm not. That doesn't mean it's not going to happen, and it doesn't mean that it's not going to make a big impact on this world. I'm just telling you, my life doesn't consist of those things. I'm telling you, my existence isn't based upon those things. You mean to tell me, preacher, nuclear war, your life doesn't consist about that? No, it doesn't. You mean to tell me grocery store shelves being empty, your life doesn't exist about that? No, it doesn't. You mean to tell me, preacher, that all this deal about wars breaking out, that... Mm -mm. My life consists because of, Jesus, because of Jesus Christ. Let me explain it to you like this. Let's talk about the grocery stores becoming empty. Let it happen. I'm ready to try some of that manna. Y'all listening to me? You said, well, he did that back in the Old Testament, preacher. These are the New Testament days. You mean to tell me he can't take and put man on my table? That's right. Huh. I'm all right with eating from the king's table. Well, when did he ever do that? Well, Elijah well, down there at the brook got fed every day from the king's table. Amen. We listening? We paying attention? Hey! Do you believe God's word or not? Are you trusting the Lord or are you not? If you are, let the mountains crumble into the sea. That's right. Let that sky turn black, amen. Hey, let it all happen. It's going to do what it's going to do, brother. Alex. I can't change that. But I can praise God in that. And in the process, I know where my existence is. Amen. Right. That's why I'm not concerned about all these other things like a lot of people are. It doesn't mean it don't affect me. But that is not my existence. I look under the wheels from which come my help. My help coming from the Lord. That's where my eyes are. That's where my focus is. Because ultimately it's in God's hands. Read on. Who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. But made himself of no reputation. Took upon him the form of a servant. Was made in the likeness of men. Being found in the fashion of a man. He humbled himself. And became obedient unto death, in the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name. That is the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. And things in heaven, and things in the earth, and things under the earth, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. All I'm trying to do is get you prepared to learn how to praise God. I'm trying to get your mind focused on praising God. Even when it seems like a difficult Wednesday night when everybody's down and out. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. <coughs> praise God. And if that don't work, praise God. Learn how to. Kick it up a notch. Amen. Why? First King, first, first Timothy chapter 1, verse number 17. Now unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. Be honor and glory forever and ever and then. Because he's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. When we get to the place in our life, no matter what happens, no matter what comes, we will praise him. That's a good place to be. Whether we win, we praise him. Whether we lose, we are going to praise him. Because guess what? Miss Linda, I've already got victory. I just hadn't got there yet. I've already got the victory. Like Brother Lester Roloff said to Brother David Gibbs, David, we don't fight for victory. We stand in victory. How true that is. Amen. We're already there. Like the Bible says, we are more than conquerors. We're more than conquerors. I didn't have to go out there and do the fighting. It's done been done for me. Amen. 
You see, how many of y'all remember 1 Corinthians 15, 51? Oh, death, where's that sting? Oh, pray, where's that victory? Huh? Come on! You not understand? You not realize? He's already conquered death in hell. That's why the power, that's why the glorifying, that's why the praising. Why? Because they know who sits on the throne. It's Jesus Christ. He's worth it. He's worth it. That's why this passage of scripture is so important. We just got through talking about chapter 2 and 3, about the seven churches, amen. Then you go into chapter 4, and it talks about there's a door in heaven open, amen. And that door in heaven open, it makes a connection between God and man. And in the process there, he shows about how God's splendor and his grandeur and his glory, his, his power and his might. And he, he ends in verse number 11, he says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For those created all things and for that place they are and were created. Wow, he's got us all pumped up. And then we get chapter 5. John hits a little speed bump right there. Because the book is ready to be opened, but there's nobody found worthy to open the book. He begins to cry, he begins to weep. And the angel of the Lord says, weep not. The lion. The lion stepped up to take the book and loosen the seals thereof. And when John opened his eyes, he didn't see him as the lion. It's almost the lamb. How it impacted his life. He begins to praise and glorify. He begins to look around the throne and see the 420 elders. He, he, he begins to see uh, the, the angels. He begins to see uh, all these, this great multitude that can't be numbered. Praising God. As God ends off the passage of Scripture, he says, and every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and, and under the earth and such are in the sea and, and that are in them and, and heard I sing blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sit upon the throne. He deserves it. He deserves it. And unto the Lamb forever and ever. The four beasts said amen. The four and twenty elders fell down and worshiped him to live it forever and ever. And that's where we need to be. Worshiping, glorifying, praising, thanking Him. First Chronicles 29, verse 11 says, Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is Thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and Thou art exalted as head above all. This doors I couldn't say any better than. Wow. First Peter chapter 4, 11. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If you got something to say, you say God's word. If you got something to say, speak out the word of God. Speak the oracles of God, he says. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth. If you got something to do, you let God God direct you in that. As God gives you the ability that God in all things may be glorified through, through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. I'd be a fool when it's Irene to step inside this pulpit and deliver a message of my own ability, my own strength. I'd be a fool. But I'm thankful that he gives me the ability to stand here to glorify and to praise his name for who he is and what he's done for me. You see, we need to remember who God really is. And we also need to remember where we came from. Because when we do, Mama, it puts us in our place. It really humbles us. Verse 14 and the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. Go over to Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3.
this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and in earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with all might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and granted in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge. I'm going to pause here for a second. I don't know why I say it. I don't know why he loves me. I just know he does. I just know he does. And I know he loves you. And he cares for you. And I know he does. You may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. That's our purpose. That's why we're here. We're here to praise Him. I've told you many times, it's so easy to praise Him on a beautiful sunshiny morning called Sunday morning, when everybody's singing to the highest pitch that they can get to, and boy, it's really moving in the crowd. But how about on a Wednesday night when you've had a pretty little rough week? You've had some little curveballs thrown at you. Everything didn't quite go like you were expecting. That's the best time to praise it. Because you're going to start, really, you're going to start thinking about and reminiscing about where you found you. Where he picked you up at. And what he's done with you. And what he's going to do. Yeah. Remember, it's not a done deal yet. That's but he will finish the work. That's why it's my verse. Being confident. Of this one thing that he that was going to go work in you will perform it into the day of Jesus. Y'all right. listening tonight? Yeah. Y'all paying attention? You see... When we go through things, it's for our good. It's for our development. But it's for our opportunity to praise Him. We're here to glorify Him. Unto Him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. John 3.16 God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Thank you. Thank you. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you speak to the hearts here tonight. I pray, Lord, you remind us where you found us. Remind us who you are and inspire us with where we're going. I pray, Lord, you speak to the hearts here tonight in Christ's name. Amen. All stand with page for the job. Page 280. 280. Guys, we you come. All right now.
See, I do realize that window of opportunity is getting smaller all the time. I'm much more concerned about those that are turning and walking away. Those that have not received. Those that don't know Jesus. Amen. Because I know when that time does come, Miss Linda, that'll be it. It'll be over with. I'll be one Lord. I've already got it all worked out. I'll be one Lord. I got it worked out because he worked it out for me. They don't. And yes, that's what really concerns me. Be very much in prayer. Be back Sunday morning. Bring somebody with you. Amen. Pray for Brother Glenn and Shelly as they mourn the loss of uh, her mother. And uh, pray they also they'll have safety on the road coming back. Pray for these others. I've been mentioned on the prayer list tonight. Lifting each other up in prayer. Amen. Thank God. Look, Art, good to see you tonight, my brother. I'm glad to hear the good news. Glad it shot really made you feel pretty good. Amen. If you will, dismiss us in prayer tonight. Amen.